This special program to celebrate the 100th birthday of Sir Derwood Knowles is brought to you by Nassau Harbor Pilots Association, Blanco Chemicals Limited, Dozer Heavy Equipment, JBR Building Supplies Limited, Ribena, Nassau Paper Company Limited, the Dalbanus Agency Limited, Ganite Pools of Nassau, NUA Insurance Agents and Brokers, Nassau Yacht Club, Master Technicians, the Free National Movement, and LJM Maritime Academy. Hello everyone, I'm Wendell Jones, and we welcome you to this special program as we celebrate the 100th birthday of a national hero in the Bahamas, Sir David Knowles, who was born on the 2nd of November, 1917, the oldest Olympian in the world, and uh, he has won a gold medal for the Bahamas in 1964, and he made Bahamians very proud on numerous occasions. And today we are so happy to be celebrating the 100th birthday, not only of an Olympian, but out of an outstanding Bahamian. Sir David Knowles, it's good to see you. <laughs> good to see you. <laughs> I don't think I, 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 I met you before. Yes, yes. We, we, we have spoken on radio programs before, but we have not done a television program like I this. I see, now you're straight. Yes. How are you doing? I'm doing exceptionally well. The only thing, I, I don't like the, the, lay, the lay by, lay, way I live. I live with my bed, on a straight, straight out bed. A bit in a bed like every day. So straight from out of the bed, you just relax all day. Yeah, I relax all day. Yeah, and you you have been active for for most of your life, and so it doesn't feel good to 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 be you, inactive. You, you you got it, man. You got it. You you you, you be active all your life until I had an accident, and that that ruined my day. Yes. Uh, that accident happened a few years ago. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And but I cannot walk, walk as you as you would like to walk. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, consequently, I have a gentleman here. He is now um, charging me every day. And anything that's necessary does to me. <laughs> but um, therefore, my uh, subject in, in, in life right now is to learn how to walk. To learn how to walk again. Yeah, and that's something. Well, you know, you are in these uh, very comfortable circumstances. You're overlooking the the harbor here and, and uh, Lady Knowles and your family taking very good care of you, I'm sure. Yeah, they like to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> but they're doing all right. Yes. Yeah, they're, they're, my yeah. wife is up and down all day. Once she kisses me in the morning, I can last for the rest of the day. Once you get a kiss in the morning, yeah. it lasts for the whole day. I wanted to hear that. Okay, yeah. very good. Well, you've been married for 70 years. Yeah. I think you were married in 1947. 47. Eh? Yeah, yeah, 47. That's, that's, that's a long time. But tell us about your early days. Uh, you, you were actually born um, near the sea. Uh, they call you Sea Wolf, right? Yeah, up in Spain. 
Mm. Yeah. I, I used to separate from the boats if I'm not going to pass it up. And I separate from them to get a better lead. But so consequently, that talk away paid off two or three times. And the, 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 the newspaper put it in, the sea wolf hit it again. The sea wolf hit it again. Yeah. I went, to, went so far and came back and I had to run in, in the right direction. Mm. And, I, and then the newspaper came out and the sea, sea wolf hit it again. So I came back with that sea, sea wolf nickname. nickname. And, uh, the American shop, he, he, he was, he was here. So that guy down the nose hit it again. <laughs> and so it's, they hit me with the sea wolf. Mm. You know, I, I, I believe a whole lot of Bahamians uh, would be interested in your youthful days uh, growing up uh, as you did. Um, like you say, you were born on Bay Street where Lightburn Marine uh, yeah. is now. Yeah. Um, that's where you were born, eh? That's right. Uh, uh, so tell us about those days, your family, your siblings. <laughs> well, uh, I, I was born in a huge three-story house right over the Lightbird Marine places. And uh, I, I hope that a lot of people realize that and find out where I was born. I um, had a hit that I, I was born in Portia Lane and grew up there. But actually, I was born on Bay Street, mm. the three story house. The first child was born there. First, my father's first child, and the first boy. And uh, so, naturally, it was a great occasion mm -hmm. to have the first boy there. Everything he had before was girls. Okay. Yeah. So um, that started the, the trend of what what he could do with a boy. And uh, it, it was very excitable for me as I grew up to the only only boy in the crowd. And uh, so I was very excited. To, to be among the girls, but very excited because I was the only boy there. And uh, that put me in a, in a position of being kind of excited, uh, being among the girls, but you know, be, be the only boy, I guess, show you how to live. Mm. So consequently, that paid off with, with, the, with, the, with the girls. They had a brother now. Yes. So. And then you had some other brothers. And then the second wife. Okay. My wife, my mother died when I was four years old. Okay. And, uh, and my father married again about ten years later. Later, he married a girl from Spanish Wells. We visited Spanish Wells quite often, and uh, consequently, uh, he had all boys this time. Mm. All boys, and consequently, we, we, we got along exceptionally well. Especially today, my uh, uh, second brother was Pussy, Pussy Dolls. He works with uh, Solomon Brothers, I think. Mm -hmm. no. yes. well, they, they run their own shop now. Right. Yeah, right, right, right. right. And he used to be the Solomon Brothers for many years. Correct. You remember, right? right? Yes, I remember him well. Yes. Yeah. And so your 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 boyhood days you was uh, really spent around the sea. Around the sea, yes, around the sea. As they come out out of the house, and uh, right across the street was the water, and I was <laughs> consequently uh, and, and 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 touched the water all my growing up days. So, how did you? Um, well, you got into sailing as a result of being very uh, close to the sea, but you obviously um, mastered the art of sailing. Um, you must have had some people around you who taught you how to do that. I'm uh, glad you brought that up. 
I, I had most of it myself. Mm. I, I grew up with my father being a sailor. He, he, he built a starboat in the yard and I was the Charlie Monroe who guided him. And consequently, I followed his footsteps step by step. And he, he didn't know what I was watching, but I, I followed his footsteps every, every step he made. And uh, I, I learned actually the, the art of sailing through him. And that paid off. He uh, was he a boat builder as well? No, no. But he was very, very friendly with a chap by the name of Charlie Monroe, mm. and they were very friendly. And he used to watch him build a boat right in the, right in the yard, and they named the boat Sandy Mac. When when did you start sailing competitively? I mean, in in international events, that sort of thing. About 1929. Mm -hmm. 1929? Yeah. Okay. Uh, that was... You were a you little boy at the time. Because you were born in 1917. Yeah. Uh -huh. If you want to call it that. <laughs> <laughs> but, um... Yeah, I got married. And moved out of... Moved out of Bay Street. You would might be surprised. I spent my honeymoon. And she's right here now. Where was that? Where did you spend your honeymoon? Honeymoon. We went to Spanish Wells. Spanish Wells. Uh, yeah, right, right. And um, then <laughs> we lived with a small cottage called Wilter College right on Bay Street. Mm. And uh, we all got along fine. And uh, we still tell together. And she's right here now, she could contradict it, but we got it all right. Yes. And uh, anyway, we went to Spanish Wells and we walked about to had late to Spanish Wells to buy a Coca Cola. Crackerjack. I said, hey, you want me all this way for a crackerjack? I said, are you lucky? She said, what you get right now? <laughs> she thought she had a good take. She didn't know what <laughs> she was in for. She got a Coca-Cola and a crackerjack on her honeymoon. That's correct. That's what she was in for. But <laughs> she learned to live on the one what she could get yet. And, uh, Anyway, so you 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 went to you went to school, where? QC. 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 Uh, and I guess most of your um, schoolmates are no longer with us. Uh, you are probably the last among them, eh? I guess I guess so. Uh, and uh, <laughs> they they separated. We, we all separate one the other. QC, QC, and I not really stayed with QC. I was director of the QC Foundation, and yet there were a lot of service, and they were prepared to make me director of QC Foundation. And uh, Charles Sweden put me in charge of the foundation itself. So, it, it, it had each of us. Mm -hmm. When you were growing up, what was your ambition? What did you want to do as a as a young man? Pilot. You wanted to be a pilot. Pilot. And it worked it's, out that uh, way. Uh, uh, but you you did some piloting uh, on 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 the seas, but you wanted actually to be a, be a pilot to run to, to fly a plane. No, 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 to run a boat. Oh, to run a boat. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. No, I didn't like planes. And uh, and you 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 actually became a pilot. Yes. Uh, 
Father McGrady, I, I was the father for 50 years. For 50 years? For 50 years. And then I had enough of that. And as I served as father for 50 years, I more or less served out in the right way. And uh, so after serving out for 50 years, I moved on here and there, 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 there. so I moved out, or actually parted it, but I moved on to other things, but remained closely associated with the pilots, and even today, I moved from the dock to the pilot's office. I see. So, yeah. So in those 50 years, you brought a whole lot of huge uh, ships into the harbor. <laughs> yeah, that's right, that's oh. right. And then, then the pilots had an office right where Rubus Station is now. Yes. Right there. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that remained my office also. And today it's an interesting office. I mean, um, so one of these days, when you're not too busy, it'd be nice to go, go up there. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, tell me, um, you, you might, might remember some of the memorable uh, ships that you guided into into the into the harbor. Uh, some of them, I guess, uh, had royalty on them, eh? Yeah, the ro Royal Yacht. I happened to pilot her right out. The, the Royal Yacht Britannia. Yeah, that's right. Uh, <laughs> now I remember that distinctly. Being a pilot on her, along with the Duke of Edinburgh. Matter of fact, I, got, I had a lot of interest in, in he was, in me, and we sailed together. I can show you a picture of that, but anyway, mm. I, I... You actually sailed with Prince Philip? Oh, yeah. You got a picture of that one now, yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, I was up in the bow sailing, crew, crew it for him, and he and the stern sailed in the boat. And he cussed some people with it. Oh, man. <laughs> he, he needs to come around here and get your car down. Oh, he's cut. He's a cuss up to the end. Yeah. Oh, man. Well, uh, he is a, a little younger than you are. I think he's about 96 or something such. And uh, you're 100. So, um, yeah. and you're still, 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 still going. Uh, when we return on the program, I want to talk about um, sailing and um, your participation in the various Olympic Games. Um, I think you started in the 50s and ended in 88 or th thereabouts. Let's take this break here on our program. This is a special tribute to the 100th birthday of Sir Derwitt Knowles. We'll come right back. This special program to celebrate the 100th birthday of Sir Derwitt Knowles has been brought to you by Nassau Harbor Pilots Association, Blanco Chemicals Limited, Dozer Heavy Equipment, JBR Building Supplies, Ribena, Nassau Paper Company Limited, the Dalbinus Agency Limited, Ganite Pools of Nassau, NUA Insurance Agents and Brokers, Nassau Yacht Club, Master Technicians, the Free National Movement, and LJM Maritime Academy. Finally the roads them fix up. You can 
now get to the new Blanco showroom on Fox Hill Road on Speed Road. Child Blanco is more than just bleach. They got window cleaners, laundry detergent, and chemicals to clean just about anything. Well, except wickedness, you know, no bleach can clean that. And now they have a whole line of pool chemicals to keep your pool bright and clean. Chlorine tablets, algaecides, scoops, poles, vacuum hoses, everything except the pool man. So come, see our new showroom and let the cleaning begin. Need insurance? Let NUA give you a hand with that, because we are the hands-on agency. Our friendly and knowledgeable agents will take their time getting to know you, understanding and meeting your insurance needs. We have three service centers in New Providence with branches in Grand Bahama, Eleuther and Abaco and many sub-agents throughout the family islands. NUA offers the security of being part of Bahamas First Holdings Limited, the largest and strongest general insurance company in the Bahamas. Contact NUA today at 302-9100 for all your insurance needs. Thousands of Bahamians have discovered that three simple letters can mean the difference between a so-so home or commercial construction project and one that's just built right. The letters JBR. JBR Building Supplies on Wolf Road has provided contractors and homeowners with quality blocks, construction materials, power tools, paint, fasteners and hardware for almost six decades and they remain the industry leader in selection, savings and solutions. Set your project apart with three simple letters JBR. Visit JBR today or call 393-8006. What's this, you ask? Oh, it's just a... Uh, Spreadsheet smashing. Edge trimming. Dog walking. Weekend away. Show boating. Gravity defying. Tree chopping. Glucose. Technology. Energy fueling. Barbecuing. Glucose refueling. Engine revving. Crowd surfing. Home commuting. Crocodile wrestling. Explosion ignoring. Awesome kind of energy. Whatever you do, do it with energy. My birthday, come again. My birthday, come again. My birthday, come again. How old am I now? My birthday, come again. My birthday, come again. My birthday, come again. So I can party all now. This special program to celebrate the 100th birthday of Sir David Knowles is brought to you by. Nassau Harbor Pilots Association, Blanco Chemicals Limited, Dozer Heavy Equipment, JBR Building Supplies Limited, Ribena, Nassau Paper Company Limited, the Dalbanus Agency Limited, Ganite Pools of Nassau, NUA Insurance Agents and Brokers, Nassau Yacht Club, Master Technicians, the Free National Movement, and LJM Maritime Academy. We're speaking with Sir David Knowles on the occasion of the celebration of his 100th birthday uh, here. He is the oldest living Olympian. And uh, Sir David, you part started participating in the Olympic Games uh, in, in the 50s. Uh, your first games, I think, in... And uh, so that, that kept me going. See, <laughs> my moral, moral, motto never give up. But use that. That's your motto, never give up. Never give up. And uh, the writing of a book was mm -hmm. uh, back here. And uh, you're doing a book now on never give up. Yes. You see, yeah. Yes. Yeah. That would be your second book, right? Yeah, yeah. Yes. No, the third. The third book. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. One was about, about the pilots. Mm -hmm. Another about, about my job running between Miami and Nassau. I always wanted to be in the boat. In the boat. And uh, then Albert Cockcock, he's a good writer. He got a hold of me, came to see me. And we just did it in my background, and uh, we had to get got together. And he, he said, "Well, I, I like to talk to you." So we said, "Well, we got together, and, and we got this together. I never gave up." So he he heard about my story going to California, and um, as it was so slow part, and so we went to California. And well, it takes eight days down there, and then it takes a long time. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
So, we got to California, and I'm down there, where you think he come from, you know, behaving, you know. We never heard about him. But I word got around, and I said, this is, this is the boy in Cuba. So Cuba, he did well, mm -hmm. so, so we got to watch out for him. So we came back with a cup. My on right and right. <laughs> I'd hit the road, hit the pub. The people in the yard club lived drunk. And they heard that there was, was one the trophy. Man. <laughs> and I thought the same year. Same year we got married, eh, Harry? Okay, okay. Hey, we got. Yeah. You got, you got married in 47? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But but your, your, uh, you sailed in the Olympics uh, with some international. Uh, sailors uh, who um, most of them are not here as we said you are the oldest living Olympian um, when you got the gold medal in 1964 in Tokyo that must have been a <laughs> wonderful time for you right? <laughs> you're right she said cook could be the baby and she said cook is a very jolly fellow Go to hell, hurry, you know, that attitude. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, now today his daughter is living. He and his wife got killed in an accident and left behind his daughter who mm -hmm. Sandra Cook. Mm -hmm. And she carried the name of Caesar Cook very well indeed. She wanted to remind you that he was in a boat with you. Yes, yes. <laughs> I never forgot. I, she was always on my hand. And don't forget my father. I never will forget him. Because the crew in those days were very valuable and very important. When you compare the other crews with other people, but he was he was very seldom, very very ha happy, go lucky, and he kept me on my legs and dying my head, very careful, and uh, so you actually need a crew like that to keep you going. And uh, what happened, as we sailed along, I realized that I had a good crew. And my Sloan Farnham was one of the best. Sloan Farrington yeah. and Cecil Cook. Yeah, Cecil Cook. Mm -hmm. Cecil Cook was fortunate enough uh, to, 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 to be my cook crew when we won the medal. Mm -hmm. So many of them were one. Yes. Yeah. That was a wonderful time in the Bahamas, I guess, with oh celebrations it's, it's uh, <laughs> uh, throughout the country, eh? Yes. Um, <laughs> Dr. Udry was our chef de mission. We used to let anybody chef de mission and all that we had people. Mm -hmm. But um, he was a chef de mission that, that he and Doris Johnson. I was a days that I guess for UBP. Yes. She she organized it, the 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 the, the, rep, the celebration going to morning you and uh, you know the sexual celebration was done by Doris Johnson. Yes. And she made a golden dress for my wife Holly. And uh, so. From there on, we kept going, I guess. Yes, you kept going. You and you uh, competed in in several Olympic games uh, since 1964. Uh, uh, 64, yes. Yeah, 64 was the Olympics when you won the gold medal. Yeah. And I believe you continued until what 1988. Yeah, 1988. So you 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 you've been around the world. I heard there was a story about you. Uh, holding up the Queen Mary. At the one level. <laughs> yes, let, let's, let's talk a little bit about that. All right. We were on our way to go to England 
to eliminate and the British topic. We couldn't represent the bombers at that time. So we had to go and cry and eliminate the British fleet to represent the Great Britain. And that that's what happened. We got on the Prince George Dark from I mean, yes. mm -hmm. <laughs> Great Britain the the the, 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 the on the deck, or the dock, that dock, dock, the way the British, the, the, the pick up the, the, the gem mm -hmm. at that time, and we got there, and she was gone. No, no, she was, the ship was supposed to pick up the, the, the gem. This is the Queen Mary. Yeah, the Queen Mary. Mm -hmm. And we phoned them. So this is a gem organized by Stafford And we, we, we went our way, but we lost our tire all the way. And we now try trying to look forward to somebody's yard. And eventually we found it and got there in time. And uh, consequently, the ship going to Great Mary, going to England, and um, we had a break breakdown in, in the in the tire department, mm. and uh, one of our crew saw the tire going into a yard, and eventually we found out and we picked up the tire and. Power and tire and put it on, and everything. We covered controversy, we put it on, and on the Mary, Mary Queen, Mary, and asked her, please, we stop us outside the door, you. And he, he was, he listened to us that way. I see, I see. Okay. And he would appreciate you being for us. So that, that so the Queen Mary waited for us to come, 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 pick up the, the tire, and, and, uh, and consequently, we, 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 we wait, she waited for us. And we had gone on to Great Britain through France. And how well did you do in those in those games in England? We did. We, did, we should have done much better, but we finished fourth. Finished fourth. Fourth. In the entire uh, Commonwealth. Yes. Interesting. Uh, and uh, so we went from there to France, I think it was. Yeah. And then and end up in the Olympics, to Great Britain, and consequently we reached well, Great Britain. And finished fourth. I mean, we should have finished way up, but one of the masts bro broke at that time, mm -hmm. blowing hard, mm -hmm. right up to our alley. We, we like, I love heavy okay. but that's what happened there. Yeah. I see. You know, so David, you uh, have been giving service for a long time in in the Bahamas, and you've been involved in many. Uh, Led many charitable organizations yes. uh, in the country. The Crippled Children's Committee, Correct. I remember extremely well. Uh, you, I am told, are the uh, second oldest Rotarian in the world. <laughs> Just about, I guess. <laughs> yeah. There's a Rotarian who is over 100, eh? That tell me not. Yes. But I told him to pour up, pour up to make sure he has uh, over well, 100. So they come in. <laughs> so you're coming along, eh? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but but you you've given tremendous service to the Rotary movement um, in the Bahamas and in the world. Uh, and tell us what what motivated you to give service like that to the Children's <laughs> co Committee and various other organizations. Well, to, to keep me involved with the children, 
and half of them I could came naturally and Holly and Charlotte, Charlotte in particular, she helped, helped, helped me and now she's helping me even more and Holly, Holly helped her, consequently it turned out to be a team and uh, so today I made Charlotte taken over my place as chairman of the children committee mm -hmm. and he she another gentleman who is in Brodery with me and we sit together and discuss Charlotte's trouble and her his trouble trouble and uh, so it, it, it made out all right. Yes. He he he's doing a good job with Charlotte. And uh, so, you've been a tremendous philanthropist in the country. So you have given back um, in many, many ways uh, in this country. Uh, many organizations yeah. have been privileged to uh, benefit from your philanthropy. Yes, I think so, and uh, it keeps keeps me going. Keep the people going behind me, Charlotte and this other gentleman, Robert Harmon. He's right there, taking it off from Charlotte, and, and so we're doing all right. Mm -hmm. Very good, very good. All right. Uh, uh, tell us, um, Sir David, uh, you are a man of faith. Yes. You're a man of faith. Your church has been very important to you, eh? <laughs> kind of. <laughs> I, I tell people who have won my money, I said, I, I have to take care of my church place. That's so now, but, but that's how it goes. Ebenezer. 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 And you, you've been a member of Ebenezer all your life. Yes, my father was uh, Ebenezer. Your father was a, a member of Ebenezer. Yes. Uh -huh. And, and faith is extremely important to you, isn't it? Yeah, because my whole family follows me. Or, you go to church? Yes, I'm going to church. And they all get together. They, my father, my wife, my daughters, my son, and my step, my, my brother's stepbrother. They're very serious in the church. And you, and you still go now? Yes, yes. Very yeah. good. Very good. I go. My last question to you is, and I want you to, to look back over the years uh, on the development of our country. Uh, you know what it was when you were growing up. You know what it is now. Uh, explain um, your life story and what it means to be a Bahamian in the Commonwealth of the Bahamas in 2017. 100, 100 years since your birth. Tell us how you feel to be a Bahamian now. Can we drop that? <laughs> <laughs> you. Oh, I not <laughs> We had some bad years, so to speak. But every country has some bad years. And t t today we are hoping for change from the previous government, but they did their best. I'm taking to you as I gather that I think you are PLP. And PLP did your job. They 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 they, they, they did well. But we're hoping that our party does a better job. Any anybody takes over from another party, 
We expect them to do better. And we're hoping to do better, that's all. And, and you are hopeful for the youth of the nation, I'm sure. Sure. They got somebody that got them by that believes in their youth. And sure, they, 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 they believe in a, in, a, in a change. And anyway, a change is what we need. And you, you are optimistic uh, for this country, aren't you? Yes. I gotta be, <laughs> but I am. Yeah, I'm. I am. And Charlotte and my my wife would I'll do anything they help to help the pop country. And, and they, 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 they 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 got wrapped up in it. Happy birthday to you. Man, I never know when I was coming. Happy birthday. But that, 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 that's a Happy birthday to you. Thank All you. the best for you for the future. That's a very, very important day, eh? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank, you. thank <laughs> you very much. Yes, thank you. Thank you. This special program to celebrate the 100th birthday of Sir David Knowles has been brought to you by Nassau Harbor Pilots Association, Blanco Chemicals Limited, Dozer Heavy Equipment, JBR Building Supplies, Ribena, Nassau Paper Company Limited, the Dalbinus Agency Limited, Ganite Pools of Nassau, NUA Insurance Agents and Brokers, Nassau Yacht Club, Master Technicians, the Free National Movement, and LJM Maritime Academy. get to the new Blanco showroom on Fox Hill Road on Speed Road. Child, Blanco is more than just bleach. They got window cleaners, laundry detergent, and chemicals to clean just about anything. Well, except wickedness, you know, no bleach can clean that. And now they have a whole line of pool chemicals to keep your pool bright and clean. Chlorine tablets, algicides, scoops, poles, vacuum hoses, everything except the pool burn. So come, see our new showroom and let the cleaning begin. Need insurance? Let NUA give you a hand with that, because we are the hands-on agency. Our friendly and knowledgeable agents will take their time getting to know you, understanding and meeting your insurance needs. We have three service centers in New Providence with branches in Grand Bahama, Eleuther and Abaco, and many sub-agents throughout the family islands. NUA offers the security of being part of Bahamas First Holdings Limited, the largest and strongest general insurance company in the Bahamas. Contact NUA today at 302-9100 for all your insurance needs. Thousands of Bahamians have discovered that three simple letters can mean the difference between a so-so home or commercial construction project and one that's just built right. The letters JBR. JBR Building Supplies on Wolf Road has provided contractors and homeowners with quality blocks, construction materials, power tools, paint, fasteners and hardware for almost six decades and they remain the industry leader in selection, savings and solutions. Set your project apart with three simple letters JBR. Visit JBR today or call 393-8006. What's this, you ask? Oh, it's just a... Uh, Spreadsheet smashing. Edge trimming. Dog walking. Weekend away. Show boating. Gravity defying. Tree chopping. Glucose. Technology. Energy fueling. Barbecuing. Glucose refueling. Engine revving. Crowd surfing. Home commuting. Crocodile wrestling. Explosion ignoring. Awesome kind of energy. Whatever you do, do it with energy. This special program to celebrate the 100th birthday of Sir David Knowles is brought to you by Nassau Harbor Pilots Association, Blanco Chemicals Limited, Dozer Heavy Equipment, JBR Building Supplies Limited, Ribena, Nassau Paper Company Limited, the Dalbinus Agency Limited, Ganite Pools of Nassau, NUA Insurance Agents and Brokers, 
NASA Yacht Club, Master Technicians, the Free National Movement, and LJM Maritime Academy. Lady Knowles, uh, it's good to see you. And um, you are celebrating with your husband after being married for 70 years. Uh, tell us about uh, living with Sir David for 70 years. <laughs> You ask me, you ask me quite a question. <laughs> Seventy years is a long time, so we have our ups and downs, like every married couple. But we all go through it, and we love each other, and that's the main thing. He said to you, to, to me that uh, when you were on, the honey, on your honeymoon, he, he gave you <laughs> cracker jack and coke soda. That's right, uh, and, and then we had to walk to the boat. You had to walk to the boat in Spanish rails. Yeah, to come home. Yes. So you've celebrated the good times and the bad times, eh? More good than bad, I hope. Yeah, oh yeah, definitely, definitely. Uh, you, you are originally from the United Kingdom, of England. Yes. Uh, and you, you fell in love with him while visiting the Bahamas? Yes. <laughs> I gave him an ultimatum. What was that ultimatum? I, I was going to leave. And, and we had been going together for a little while, you know, for a couple of weeks. <laughs> and I said to him, I'm going to leave. Now you're going to have to tell me if we keep it up or if we forget about it. Mm. So he says, no, we'll keep it up. And so you didn't, so, go, you didn't so, go back to England? No, now I went back to, I went to Canada and three months later I came back and got married. Excellent. So you've had 70 wonderful years, I'm oh, sure. Yes, wonderful, yeah. And you've been to some of these international competitions with him, eh? Not really. No? Well, it's very difficult when you've got three children. Okay. Uh-huh. Uh, I remember the one that we went in Africa, in California. That was before we had it. Mm. Yeah. And then yeah. we went to... Uh, 68. Mexico. In Mexico. And then yeah, we went to Seoul. Mexico and Seoul. So you went to three Olympic Games. Yeah. You enjoyed sailing as well? No. <laughs> no? No. I don't I don't have anything to do with the water or the boat. Do you but you understand sailing? Not really. No, not really. I love Tokyo Tokyo Tokyo. Four o'clock in the morning. That's all that's all you want to eat. Yeah. I thought she went to me. I said, yeah, we won. Hey, well, I don't I don't think you to call me for anything else if we had won. <laughs> <laughs> no, the Olympics. But uh, so, so you, you had a wonderful time uh, living with your husband and growing up uh, three children. Right, right. All very good. Very good. Very good. Well, I'm sure you are enjoying this birthday with Sadhu, eh? Oh, yes. Yes, I hope we have another one. Oh, many more. Many, many more. 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 Many uh, Charlotte, it's very good to see you, and um, uh, I'm sure that you are enjoying uh, these celebrations with your father. Very much, yes. We're so happy that, um, that he's so well and in and, and, um, sound mind that he can enjoy the 100th celebration. And uh, I'm sure you are particularly uh, pleased that um, he is the oldest Olympian in the world. Yes, I brag a lot about him, but now I have even more to brag about. And, and um, I believe that people are coming from around the world and saluting him on this occasion. Yes, right? they are. We had um, someone from the Olympic Museum come and interview him. And um, he's just been getting so many accolades from all over, just congratulating him. He did say he was glad the other fellow died, so he can now be the oldest Olympian <laughs> champion in the world. Yeah. Uh, you, obviously, uh, you're doing some work um, for... Uh, the Children's Committee and uh, assisting your father in many, many ways. But, but, but before we talk about that, tell me about uh, growing up uh, with him as your father. Well, <laughs> he was not the ideal father that you look to today, where, pe where dads are going to 
soccer games and picking the kids up from school. When he picked us up from school, he either was late or he forgot us. So that was um, that was not the perfect um, ideal father in that sense, but he made us very proud. When he went away to sail again as a six or seven year old, you couldn't understand when they said he went to the Olympics that he was gone for weeks and weeks at a time. And to do what? To sail that. That didn't seem so special then, but now I appreciate everything that he did. And um, as time went on, when his sailing career came to more of a halt, he, um, he couldn't have been a, a better father and a better father figure to us. He's always been there giving us advice, giving us um, support. He's just been a tremendous father in that respect. Growing up was a little different. Mom was the backbone of the family, and she never once, and being an English lady, I think that um, she had such good upbringing, because a Bahamian woman would have said, where do you think your father is? Yeah. Where she never, ever said that. So we just appreciated what he did, and because of her, I think we accepted it and, um, and it made us so proud. The only thing, though, was when he'd come back from a, um, a trip, we expected gifts. Mm. Well, when I'd searched through the suitcase, all I saw was silver trophies. So <laughs> that was a bit of a disappointment. But in hindsight, when I look at it now, I couldn't have been prouder. Yes, yes. And I know I speak for all the children. Yes. Your, your father's a man of, of tremendous wit. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm sure he shared a whole lot of that with you, eh? Yes, yes. He was always sarcastic. And the more sarcastic he was, the more he knew you, he liked you. So... Um, mm. If he didn't joke with you, then yeah, oh, so so. But if he, he teased you, you knew that you were in his good books. Yes, I spoke to him about philanthropy and uh, the contributions made to many organizations, to sailing. Um, your your father had a difficulty saying no to people oh. who are in search oh, of funds. Very right? much, and don't let him shed a tear because that was it. Done deal. They got whatever they wanted. Um, no, he's been very generous and. I think to a fault, to some degree, that people have taken advantage of him, but he's, he's had it, so he's given back, and I think that the Lord has blessed him with his health, and we are so grateful for that, because he's always taught us to give and not expect anything in return, and we try to live our lives like that, and he has just been a shining example, as well as my mother, to be kind and generous and as helpful as you can be to your best ability. These are all of the things that your father learned in Ebenezer Methodist that, Church. That's right. right. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, thank, thank you so very much. I'm sure you were enjoying this birthday. Yes, very much. And we're just so proud that um, of all the accomplishments he's done and, um, and just that he's making 100 years. But he has an older sister that's 102. Okay. So he's got to catch her up. Okay, very good. Well, let's hope that he does yes. and he passes her, but in good health. Yes, yeah. and thank you so much for taking your time out to come and interview him. No problem. Thank you so okay. very much. You've been watching and listening to a special program on the life and times of Sir Derwood Knowles, a national hero here in the Bahamas, a legend as he celebrated his 100th birthday around with his wife and his daughter, and uh, you heard tributes coming from other people. And so on behalf of a grateful nation, the Commonwealth of the Bahamas, and all of us here at JCM, we wish him a very happy 100th birthday. Thank you for watching and listening, and good evening, everyone. This special program to celebrate the 100th birthday of Sir David Knowles has been brought to you by Nassau Harbor Pilots Association, Blanco Chemicals Limited, Dozer Heavy Equipment, JBR Building Supplies, Ribena, Nassau Paper Company Limited, the Dalbinus Agency Limited, Ganite Pools of Nassau, NUA Insurance Agents and Brokers, Nassau Yacht Club, Master Technicians, the Free National Movement, and LJM Maritime Academy. Happy birthday, come on, get it. Happy birthday.